fifth grade. Read today's. I read today's. It's really good. Oh, is there one for each day? Yeah, you read it every day. Oh, shit. Oh, I see, I see, I see. It's like a daily. Day. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to lose your spot. Oh, no. It'll it'll be on today's or whatever. Okay. Word. Is that it? Oh, hell yeah. Except only what is true. It's no. just figuring out what's true and what's not. Exactly. That's cool. So. Oh, shit. I got my, my mom got my dad that book. That book's really <laughs> the good. The Leonardo too. da Vinci one. Yeah, I've read oh, that. Damn, I haven't I've read, read that. I've read that twice now. It's really good. I should read that too. Okay, book list. Book list. I need one of those. Yeah. yeah. I have to. I'm a visual learner, so I have to have like marker boards and paper. And uh-huh. I have to write everything down. and. Yeah, me too. If I can Visible see it, words. I can make it happen. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of visual learner and thinker I am too. Yeah, really. Hands on. Very hands on. Math <laughs> and English were always my favorite subjects. I loved English too. Yeah, because I like math because there were it was equations, so it was like mm-hmm. I don't have to memorize some base thing to understand this. I have to. It's an it's equation. It's like to cut work. and dry. It's an equation. It can't that. not work. I think that's what yeah. brings people peace about it. Well, I don't. Some some subjects, it's all memorization, uh-huh. and there's no like configuration really. There's no problem to yeah. solve. Yeah, and like with English, I always thought there was a problem to solve, mm-hmm. and with math, I always thought there was a problem to solve. I can see, yeah, definitely there's a connection between the two. Because, like, writing poetry is mathematical in ways. Or just, like, that way of thinking. It's like you're unlocking a code. Yeah. Or, yeah. You're the rhythms of the words and uh-huh. what they're going to, like, when you read it, what is it going to put it in your mind when you read it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like for songwriting. It's kind of like yeah. what you do. Heck, yeah. Yeah. Well, Get into it. You've been, you've been like, on a oh, roll. You have questions. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got a whole list of questions. Oh here. shit. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to the Nashville Artists. I'm Jordan, and today Juniper Eveline is here. <laughs> yes, hi. <laughs> welcome to my house. That was perfect. Good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I gotta get it right. <laughs> okay, cool. So where are you from? I'm from here. Oh, you're from I'm Nashville. Born and raised. Good Nashville Southern crop right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Do you have one any... of the rare unicorns? Right. I do, think you, do you have any uh, siblings? I have an older half sister. Mhm. On my dad's side, she's quite a bit older than me. She was like 17 when I was born. Uh-huh. And she, we lived together when I was a baby, but I mostly grew up as an only child. Oh, okay. The only child experience, and that might hurt her feelings. But she, we didn't live together, so it was kind of like I grew up as an only child in a lot of ways. I see. Is she musical or arts, artistic? Um, yeah, she is artistic. Not, mu- I mean, music appreciator. She's kind of like Jill of all trades, as am I. But I have a nephew, too. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, <laughs> I was like, should I give the whole oh, yeah. family history? No, 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 no. It's okay. I was just wondering if I No, if this. you let me run on a tangent, I will. <laughs> are your are your parents musical or Yeah, both of my parents were like in the music biz and songwriters. And they both are, like, still so active with it. Especially my dad. He's like seventy seven or something. Yeah, I have older parents. That's how old my dad is. Really? Yeah. Okay, when you said your dad was, was in Vietnam, Vietnam yeah. I was like, holy shit, mine yeah. too. Yeah, I was wondering. But, what was I going with that? <laughs> your parents, what were they? Music? Oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah, he's still so active. He's like, yeah, I'm playing a show tonight. I'm playing a show. Me and, me and my buds are playing a show. I'm like, hell yeah, dad. Really? And my mom still writes too, and she's an English professor at TSU, but she incorporates a lot of her music within, like, her teaching and... She'll have her students do like singing prompts and stuff. Wow. I wish I could have my mom as a teacher, like in an in an alternate world. Really? Mm-hmm. We got beef though too, a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll get into that later. <laughs> so your dad, what kind of music does he play? It's like he likes gospel, like blues bluegrassy country type stuff. 
I used to always say country, and then I was like, that's not fair, because he, he likes all sort of stuff. My parents, like, love bossa nova music, so I, I grew up listening to a lot of bossa nova music and, like, Girl from Ipanema. And, oh, yeah. So their tastes are sort of all over the place, but... Yeah, my mom played bossa, bossa Nova music and was in a couple of jazz bands. And then her own, like, folk singer-songwriter stuff was sort of, like, later in her career. And then my dad worked in production and, like, audio engineering. He did all sorts of stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, they they both have lived, lived, like, very interesting lives and have done, like, a lot of different things. My dad loves to uh, tell the story about Do- Dolly Parton pinching his butt <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> oh, He's wow. like, yeah, Dolly Parton pinched my butt working in when I was working on one of her sessions. She just, hey, cutie, came up and pinched my butt. You get it? <laughs> so yeah, they have weird stories like that sometimes. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so, what were you into as a kid? Art, anything like arts and craft, crafts related. It's like always drawing or making cards or like beads like necklaces or just whatever and I love to dress up and do like fashion shows <laughs> I was I was like a really outgoing kid like I loved the spotlight and just like being like performing for my parents at home and like for people yeah but I I would spend like hours in my room by myself just like tinkering with like arts and crafts and shit and like making cards like I, I I make well I used to until recently until I don't have time anymore like make cards for my family like on holidays and stuff so I was just like always doing random shit like that nice. yeah keep kept myself busy yeah with projects and my parents were very like encouraging of that too and I uh took like violin lessons and I was in the National Children's Choir just like they they always were active and like keeping me active you know <laughs> so they were good parents in in those ways you know sure looking back yeah <clears throat> when i was a little kid one of my favorite toys was the glue gun the glue gun yeah because i would take popsicle sticks and make houses oh out of them oh yeah 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 with yeah the glue, glue gun, gun. i mom, still like, use a glue gun my mom would like fix my toys with the glue gun and uh-huh. then i learned <laughs> you learned what it did. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow. Only world and, then I started, and then I started collecting my popsicle sticks so that I could start <laughs> building, building, house. building houses with them. Yeah, <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. Your imagination. Yeah, glue gun is pretty, like, revolutionary, honestly. Because <laughs> yeah. it dries, like, so fast. Right. So your vision can just come to life. Exactly. Fucking love like, glue guns. I can build a house right now. <laughs> For my action figures. You know. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. your action figures. <laughs> exactly. See, for me, it was my brat dolls. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I didn't really fucks with Barbie. It was mostly brats. Yeah. Because I was like, that girl, that girly. <laughs> I wanted to be that girl so bad. But... There was like such a different fashion style. Which right? Yeah. I know, I feel like you were... One's way more glamorous. Yeah. Barbie was kind yeah. of like... Like, uh... very like... Yeah. Well, Bart, they're all problematic. Like, <laughs> if we're, you know, yeah. if we're gonna, if we're gonna get to like the politics of it, like it's all pretty fucked up. Yeah. In terms of like body standards. And, exactly. Like, the yeah. norm, because like when you think of Barbie, it's like, like, white girl, blonde hair, like blue eyes, like very, you know. Right. Anyways. <laughs> get into the psychology. Stand up for our young girls in this country. We need to make better. Everywhere. Figures. The whole world. Yeah. That's my We need to make a cry. new a new Barbie or a new I think they tried to do I that. think they did too. I, I actually and people are like, no, you are not doing They're not job. trying hard enough or something. Because they're like trying to put blemishes and stuff on the Barbie and it just looked like it was a Halloween Barbie or something like that. Because they did it like really <laughs> badly. Yeah. I just imagine. Yeah. Like a pumpkin for well, like no, the like, head. like Acne but like you're like, you're saying like the makeup was like horrid. Or no, like, it was like acne and like. Oh. That kind of stuff. Oh, so the oh. They're yeah, trying they're to trying be, to be like that. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, like I was that. Like, yeah, it was inclusive. extreme. It was extreme. I mean, like I. I mean, I, res- I yeah. respect the effort, honestly. Yeah. 
I, but but it also is kind of like, are you just doing this to like say you're fucking doing it? Oh, no. You know, I'm like, none of these fucking corporations, you know, billionaires, whatever, actually give a fuck no. about how we as consumers feel. And if they do something that is like inclusive, it's for corporate usually interest. a marketing tactic. Yeah. yeah, and for like corporate. I mean, not all the time. There's some sure. brands that are like out here killing it, like you know, represent, represent. But yeah, Barbie. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Barbie, Barbie, no, not Barbie herself, but... Barbie can show, but her makers... But my people will be talking to her people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I might have to leave with my cards, call with my associates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So, what would you say first got you into art, fashion, and music? Was there, like, a movie or something, or, like, music or anything? Like, I mean, just growing up, it was just sort of, like, I was just around it, and I don't know, it was just, like, making art was just something that, it was, like, my main outlet, like, where most of my focus and attention went. So it just is kind of, like, I don't know, just a natural urge to do it. I don't, I don't, I feel like... When it comes to visual art, I don't have, like, a specific, like, experience or instance that's like, oh, that's how I got into it. But, yeah, and then I guess for, like, music, like, yeah, I, my parents played a lot of, like, bossa nova music and, like, folk music, like, Stevie Nicks and, like, like a lot of gospel and, like, 60s R&B and stuff like that. So, I guess that, like, my parents' taste kind of informed my own in that way. So... If that answers the question, <laughs> I feel like yeah, I kind of forgot like, what it was after I started talking. <laughs> it would make sense since both of your parents play music, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just, like, there. And, like, I guess there wasn't an expectation necessarily for me to be musical, but, like, I, I just started singing and, like, expressing my interest in music from a really young age, so my parents just, like, nurtured that, and that's why, like, you know, I learned instruments and, like... They got me into like programs and stuff. So yeah, that's the root. <laughs> Did you have any like favorite artists or early influences? Oh yeah, my, so yeah, my mom was actually pretty like important with like showing me like music and stuff. And she's always, like she'll text, she'll still text me today and be like, like last night she's like, Patty Smith was on Jimmy Kimmel. Or she'll be like, blah, 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 is on Jimmy Kimmel. Like, check it out, girl. Like, <laughs> have you been keeping up? Oh. She'll be like, listen to this new song I just discovered. Yeah, my mom's always been like that. But my, like, earliest, most profound influences were Hot Fuss by The Killers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I am still such a diehard for that album. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. it's so fucking good. And then my first concert actually was Fall Out Boy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And my mom was like, she took me to that concert. Taylor Swift, too, was really influential on me, like, as a young child. As I, like, grew into adulthood, I sort of, I don't know, I feel like I jumped on that train of, like, Taylor Swift is overrated or whatever. But, like, she's not. Okay? She's really talented. And even if it's not your cup of tea, I still think she's a great, like, lyricist, which is what I really liked about her as a kid. I was just like, oh, you can, like, tell stories with songs. So I'd be, like, sad, like, like 11 years old, like, why'd you break my heart? <laughs> you know, like some boy at school. Right. Yeah, my earliest. That's the underground shit. <laughs> the earliest crush, yeah. That's the early shit. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. So, how did you start out doing music and art? I mean, you mm -hmm. do a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've sort of done, like, all of them at the same time, which has made my life, like, both really exciting and fun, but also, like, kind of stressful, because I'm always, like... <laughs> I'm, like, making music one day, or I'm, like, drawing and, like, doing more of, like, a visual art project, or, like, I'm styling, or, like, making clothes, or, like, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know, my brain, I'm kind of scattered, I don't, people are like, oh, it's because you're a Gemini, you're, you're a creative Gemini, so, of course, <laughs> I'm like, 
Don't box me in. Bro. Maybe, maybe like a little bit of mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I like grew up playing instruments and like singing and stuff. And then I taught myself how to play guitar like high school ish and started like actually writing songs and like teaching myself how to write songs and like paying attention to like artists that I liked and like lyrics and like how to formulate, you know how to actually write a song and then how to get like creative and metaphorical with it and like make it something interesting, which is something you develop sort of over time and something that like you'll always work on, I guess, as an artist. But so, yeah. And then I went to UTC and studied graphic design, got my degree in graphic design and was like, I almost dropped out because I was like, this is not my calling. Like I, I just had like, like a huge existential crisis about it. Even though I liked graphic design, I just knew deep down that I didn't want to pursue it, like, as a career or, like, as a, especially not in, like, a corporate commercial way, which was kind of, like, just expected or kind of just kind of your rite of passage, I guess, which all of that was sort of daunting to me. So, but anyways, the good, good things came from that, too. Like, I learned a lot and shit. So, yeah, but I graduated and just over the past, like, few years, I've actually had time to, like write music and like develop my style and like experiment which is so important and something that I used to be like sort of ashamed of but like everybody has to do it experimentation all the time like you got to try weird shit to figure out what resonates with you and some of my some of my like older stuff stuff that I'm actually just now putting out because I have been such a perfectionist and like I've like hoarded all of this like all of this music that I've made just out of like, ah, oh, it's not good enough. Or like the mix, because I produce mix and everything. So, which I technically don't even know how to like mix and master. I just like wing it. So I always be like, it's not, the mix isn't good enough or whatever the fuck. But now, now I'm finally putting it out. So. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you kind of just have to keep testing things mm-hmm. and fail and fail and fail. Yeah. Because that's the only way you'll get through it. Mm-hmm. And not be ashamed of, like, those versions of yourself that, you know... Were before, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, some, somebody, like, said it. I, I want to say it was Adele, which is super random. But she was like, one of the, like, worst things you can do to yourself as an artist is, like, be selfish, selfish with your art and, like, um, keep stuff unreleased, you know? And, like, she was talking about music. Yeah. She's like, you have to put out all of your shit. That's how I imagine her saying. <laughs> put out your music now, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, she probably wouldn't say that. <laughs> the Queen of England fucking would. Yeah. But you know where she is. The rest of these. Yep, yeah, she's no longer with us. She's in. She's in the astral world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. You went to UTC. Mm-hmm. Chattanooga. I'm from Lookout Mountain. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, Lookout Mountain's so pretty. Damn, so you're, like, from Chattanooga. From Lookout Mountain, Georgia, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess it is technically Georgia. That's I crazy. I live close to Rock City. Oh, oh, It's like right. there's the Tennessee side in Long, Georgia. Uh-huh. And if you go way back, it goes into Alabama. Oh. Yeah, I remember crossing the line like from georgia to Tennessee. oh yeah you'll do that like a million yeah. times <laughs> like, yeah i would like that's crazy yeah i would drive down the street from my house and be, mm. in, t- and be in tennessee Damn. so uh, i guess technically yeah, I'm <laughs> chattanooga's like a weird little portal like that yeah, i'm like from georgia <laughs> and tennessee <laughs> not chattanooga being a portal yeah too, what was your experience in chattanooga it was good Chattanooga has like an odd energy to it. I mean, like, do you know what I mean? Yes. It's like a quirky energy. Yeah, but it's it like is. fun. It's kinda of like impish. It is. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I think so. It's what I it's, this is how I think. It's like, like fairyland or something. I think of well, I think like sometimes I feel like it, it's it's this odd energy. Yeah. People are really clicky there. Oh because uh, yeah. there's like the different, you know, we come from the mountain. We come from. The oh, world. like geographical. We went to Macaulay. We went to. Oh, we went to yeah. Berlin. And then the, you have this campus. It's like. Yeah. Mhm. Cause it's a small place. 
So when you have like a bunch of different subgroups in a small place, it's like yeah, a bunch of bubbles. <laughs> like I bet you, you and I have a million mutual friends. Um, yeah. Probably. How long did you live there, or when did you move from uh, there? Uh, well, I went to college here in Belmont. Oh, okay. For a year, but then I went back to Chattanooga, but then I moved back here in 2017. So I've gotcha. been here for five years. So you were there for a while. Yeah. Damn, so yeah, we definitely know some of the same people. That's crazy. Yeah. We'll chit chat. <laughs> we'll name drop. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do some yeah. heavy name dropping. That's yeah. like, uh, did you ever eat at the Yellow Deli? Oh, uh, yeah, all the time. I don't <laughs> eat there now because I don't believe in what they do. Uh, but. yeah. Yeah. Boycott the place now because they don't yeah. believe in uh, different races breeding. Uh huh. And I'm like, fuck. It's pretty fucking demonic, yeah. I was like, uh, yeah. all the things that y'all are cool with, e- how is it wrong if a black person has sex with a white also, person? Also, they have, well, they're like, they there are black people yeah. and people of color, like, in the the tribe or whatever the fuck it's called the cult but they probably won't let them but but okay yeah and all the children are everyone's children right everything was communal i did know that like everything right like the parents will raise everyone which is very psychologically damaging to a young child not to mention like the fucking misogyny and just like the women are expected to just like pop out babies you know Good like god yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, so you bring out so, the yellow deli, it's so gonna yeah. get fucking dark, but the food? We, uh, why the food? does the food have to be gas, though? Like, the why is, is the so food good. so fucking bomb? Like, do you know how many moral conclusions well, I've it's, had? It's over... really messed up that it's on UTC's campus, because they go there. Well, they're baiting. I know, no, exactly. literally, they're, they're fucking they're baiting for scheming. vulnerable exactly. young people to, like, corrupt Poor their people. minds. They're like, I, I'd always go in there and I'd be studying, like, accounting, and the guy would come over. Uh, and try to the one with the ponytail. Any any one of them. <laughs> the way they they're all, all with the ponies. fucking funny <laughs> stuff and beards, beards and ponytails. And he comes over <laughs> and he's like trying to tell me why I shouldn't be studying accounting. And I'm like, what? Is bullshit. Like giving uh, you life advice? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, you should you come join us, or whatever. And I was like, let me ask you a couple come questions. Come join us. I was like, if I were to come join you or come join y'all, would I be able to sit? in my room and play my drums for like three to six hours every yeah. time I wanted to and they're like well no you wouldn't be able to do that I'm like why not and he's like because you'd be part of the community and I'm like yeah see my religion and what I believe lets me do that so I would never join your your thing I was like that's a very lo- like rational way of putting it I was like, like yeah my, my religion, religion and everything that I believe lets me do that uh huh why would I ever join some that? that? Yeah. Just yeah. to join some... So then he was like, I guess you make a point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, you... because it's like, you know that these people were, like, regular people before they were in it. Some of them... Well, they're, the right? problem is... It, is the they're born into it. Poor people are probably bored with their lives. Yeah. And that's why they join. And it gives them the, purpose. Exactly. They're looking for people it's that... It's really horrible because these people are mm-hmm. bored and like look... Or just like... D- yeah, they're just like lost. And when you have somebody... When you're lost and you have somebody say, hey, come with us. You, we'll give you, you... Yeah, we'll give you like a place to see. You're like, oh, hell yeah, this is what I need. Yeah, I've heard a lot of horror stories of like people getting kidnapped and shit. From the Yellow Deli? Well, like, I've heard like someone was at a music festival and they did too much acid and they like oh like kind of like had a really bad trip and oh, kind of got lost shit. and then the yellow deli people found them at the festival and like took care of them and calmed them down or whatever and then like after several days when he come come to oh um, my god it, he like was like where am i and they're like you're back at our compound or our company and he's like why am i here and like well we helped you <gasps> with your trip. Oh my god. And he's like, well, I gotta go home. I know. You have to help us now. Yeah. And so they took him to the Yellow Deli okay. and like he were like trying to train him to work. And what? he saw someone from the festival and like, were like, like hunted like, him down. Was like, help me get out of here. 
like what? Because he didn't have a cell phone. And this was probably oh fuck. This was probably back in like stuff. Yeah, where he or, lo- he lost it or whatever. I don't know. Oh yeah. Because like he was tripping. Because he literally out. got fucking kidnapped from yeah the festival. And so he like and this was probably like in 2003, 2002. Oh So like God. he was like like help me like help me get out of here like what and so he just fuck? like found this stranger and was like, like and I, I was, like, was eating in the yeah, restaurant yeah, yeah and he was like dude you gotta help me he was like can you fucking imagine so i heard stories like that and I'm like oh my god yeah yeah it's a different kind of niceness hey we helped you now help us go oh, shut up this reminded me of get out yeah it is it is it is come with us <laughs> so yeah i'm it's freaky deaky. as much as chattanooga it's always going to be there but i lived across i so i lived in a house across the street from the yellow deli house so i'd always see them like walking around my neighborhood and stuff and like the you kids, live on palmetto no i lived on in the fortwood neighborhood oh, okay. adjacent or yeah adjacent to palmetto it's like the street behind Palmetto, I think. Anyways, yeah, their house was on in my neighborhood, and I'd always see them, like the kids playing in the front yard, and they would do like music circles, and like you know, from the outside, it looks like oh, that's so magical, <laughs> which is obviously the the image that they want to like give off. But right, we're so happy. It's like a huge house, like huge white mansion with like pillars. Oh really? Like a huge lawn. Yeah, they had like a fucking mansion in the neighborhood. Like it was huge. Wow. Very strange. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was spying on them. And they would always be like walking down the street. And you know, you can tell you can tell they are because of how they dress. It's weird, yeah. Why did you leave Chattanooga? I just moved back to Nashville because I knew I didn't want to stay in Chattanooga. I had no like jobs lined up there and a lot of my friends were moving back here too, so it just kinda felt natural. Yeah. Yeah had unfinished business with Nash. Right. Nashville. <laughs> the, the motherland. <laughs> the motherland. No, literally the motherland. You know, it's crazy. I still, to this day, live on the same property that I grew up on. And my mom does too. And we live in houses on the same property across from each other. So I'm like, what's up, girl? She's like, wow. can I take Archie on a walk? That's my dog. I'm like, yeah, come get him. Wow. So just like, walk it. <laughs> yeah, that's my life. <laughs> next door neighbor with your mom? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> and I, um, yeah. So I, I am still very, like, connected to my childhood, which has been really rewarding and, like, a blessing in a lot of ways and kind of, like, weird in other ways, you know? If you can imagine, like, just, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can talk I more about that later, I guess. But. I can't even imagine like, <laughs> living next to my mom. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that would be so... Sh- like, if my mom lived next door, <laughs> my parents lived next yeah. door, that'd be so strange. It is strange. I'm about to get a roommate, too, in January. Do you uh, do you know uh, Jordan from Heaven Honey? Yeah, I know of, the, of her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is, like, this is like a spoiler. Anyway, so yeah, I live by myself now but I'm, I'm about to not live by myself. But yeah, living next to my mom has been nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I feel like it's awkward to talk about. No, yeah, we don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I'm just like, living next to my mom. Yeah, no, yeah. she helps me out with a lot of stuff and like, I have a lot of space. Like, it's a good living situation for me and like my parents, you know, they're, they're always just like really nice with like, helping me out with shit so that's awesome yeah but we are like we also have had a contentious relationship in the past so yes it can't it is a weird at times <laughs> and my dad doesn't live there anymore he used to but he lives in south carolina now so oh. it's just me and her oh. yeah. okay why would you say you're drawn to art um fashion music yeah i think a lot of why I make art is because I'm trying sort of like what we were talking earlier with like solving problems like I'm kind of trying to get to like the root of something or like a feeling or an idea and I don't know I just feel like being creative in any way is just how I express myself like I don't I don't know everybody has their own 
way of being expressive and their own stuff that they're into, I guess. But yeah, just being like hands on, like making stuff. And then with my music, I merge a lot of like of my writing and my poetry with my songs. So that's kind of how I marry those two. And yeah, with everything, especially my music and my art, it's sort of like a cathartic process of like, I, I mean, I use it, it's very therapeutic for me to like write and draw just because it's, I don't know, it's just a release, like, and a lot of my lyrics are really metaphorical and kind of like hard to like figure out, but they're all related to like just shit that I've gone through or like mental health, things that I care about, like animal rights, <laughs> like just a plethora of like things that speak to me. But a lot of it is just, like, working out my emotions. Like, some of my favorite drawings I've made when I was, like, really fucking sad or, like, just really angry or, like... And they always turn out the best. (laughs) So it's kind of like fuel. Yeah. And then you get to expel that energy and turn it into something... Positive. You know, positive and creative. And, like, even if the art is dark or the subject matter is dark or the music is dark whatever that meaning is for you like that still serves such a good purpose you know as long as it's not hurting other people you know as long as your lyrics aren't like yeah fuck you know yeah you know what i'm trying to say um (laughs) i'm like i'm like hold on now don't i can't give out a free pass like do whatever you want say whatever you want um no hate speech but yeah, it's, yeah, like, that's yeah. The different corners of the of our mind can be yeah. really dark places, but exploring mm-hmm. them brings it to the light, and then you don't mm-hmm. worry about suppression. Exactly. Because that's the worst thing you can do is suppress, mm-hmm. become like a pipe bomb, and then yeah. someone unfortunate soul is gonna get the like, right. The wrath. Your nervous system is gonna be dysregulated as hell. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm right there with you. Some of the darkest stuff yeah. is where I find release. Uh-huh. Or like um, subject matter that's really dark. Just like mm-hmm. it makes me feel okay with the way that I feel. Yeah. Because I'm like, man, I am not. Happy we're we're all, all hu- like we're yeah we're humans. You know, I feel like in our culture there's this like toxic. Well, there is toxic positivity, and especially when it comes to mental health, this is just something that I'm passionate about just from my personal experience, but it's like, the older generations, it was so taboo to talk about mental health, and even now, it's sort of taboo, but I feel like our generation, whether it be from the internet or just, like, a will to expand on, like, that knowledge, like, there's more of, like there's more conversation about mental health and there's more access to learning about mental health but like for my parents and stuff and like for you know yeah, our parents, parents grandparents like older generations like they did not have the fucking resources that we do today to like learn like they don't even know what fucking trauma is they don't even know that they have trauma some of them you know yeah. not all of them some of them i'm sure are fully aware and like there's like fucking psychologists and like scientists that like Okay. <laughs> fucking know about this shit but like just the common you know like even with my parents it's like mental health was like not talked about so yeah I where I was going with that is I just feel like a lot of times people are like scared of what might be dark or like taboo or primal or they or, should know that about me because it's like, right right it's like, it doesn't really matter we're all messed up yeah exactly so yeah, I'm just brutally honest yeah. um, with my work I try to be, which was uncomfortable and still is at times for me just because it is such a personal thing that you're connected to. And sometimes you do kind of want, like I do have a tendency to like work in isolation. I, I like, I love being by myself. Like what we were talking about earlier, like I love my alone time. Like I need it. It's like how I recharge. Like yeah. I fucking love being by myself, but I, also can isolate too much and like be in my own world in my own head too much but like making music and making art and being expressive just just doing what like you know 
I truly believe I was here to do just be creative, like all left brain, no right brain. I can't, you know, don't give me anything like scientific to figure out. Like I fucking hate, I don't fuck with it. I mean, I think it's interesting, but like, you know, it's like, do you want to learn how to, um, it's not why you're here. Do you want to learn how to put this like robot desk together? I would be like, that sounds like my actual, like, no, kill me first. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but see, like, you do, like, car detailing, so, like, you probably, like, are into, like, the technical, like, mathematical. Like, I imagine there's a lot of, like, I just precision have, with I that. I have stages. Perci- mm-hmm. My eyesight's really good, so it helps to... That's kind of a fun thing yeah. to test my eyes with. Okay. And it's just, like... I'm a very physical person. So uh huh. I have. You have to be. If I don't go yeah, work out yeah. or do something extreme, I will do something extremely negative. <laughs> yeah. yeah so like, which is like also yeah, people don't know that like I have so much you need to exercise. That I have to like get you have it to out. expel. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I, like sitting at a computer or a desk all day would kill me. Like yeah. So I can't. I don't I have too much energy for that. Yeah. So it's I'm, not good for you. No. The amount of hours we're expected to be sedentary every day, even, like, kids in school, like, grade school and shit, and, like, it's just, like, so fucking sedentary. Yeah. Dude. So, like, so programmed, just, yeah. When I got out of college, my back was killing me. I'm spending really? five, ten hours. Just, like, In the hard. library, just being in the And your posture is just, like, shit. Well, yeah, like, and your body, yeah, it's just... And you're not getting enough sleep, and you're fucking tired, and, like, yeah, you're hunched yeah, over. It was, it was bad. I also. still have, like, back problems. I'm like, I'm an old lady. <laughs> I was like, that's why I'm gonna do, like, yoga, and massage, yeah, therapy. Stretch, yeah, stretch. Yeah, I have to do that wellness. all the time. Yeah, wellness. See, you know when I got into wellness? Was when I was hurting too bad to ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. That's when that's when I was like, oh, I should probably fucking take care of myself instead of letting myself like wither away in misery. Like. You kind of got to do prep work every day mm-hmm. for the big catastrophe to happen. Yeah. It's yeah. But yeah, with the whole isolation thing, like comfort. Comfort is kind of like your worst enemy in a lot of ways. You know, because then you can do nothing and you're yeah. And when you isolate, you're comfortable. You know, if you have anxiety, I have anxiety, so yeah, you know, sometimes like going out in the world is uncomfortable for me, so I can just like be in my shell, right? (laughs) Be in my comfort, but then I have to be like, no, girl, we got shit to do. Uh, Come on, you're booked and busy, yeah. Like, come on, babes, we gotta get up. Like, we, we got too much shit to do in this life to be like not putting your shit out there, you know, right. not putting goals. yourself out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, can't hide away in a hole that no one mm, It's tempting though, like it truly, is. because sometimes I am like, some days I'm like, yeah, I really do just want to like fuck off forever, <laughs> like <laughs> off the fucking grid. Like, I don't want anybody to perceive me. I don't want. Don't I don't, call me. I'll call you. Yeah, yeah. I want to throw my phone in the fucking lake. Like I don't give a shit. Like some days I really feel like that. I feel you. Dude. Yeah. You're like looking out the window, zooming up, zooming, coming to get. No, yeah. I'm like, like voyeurism. I'm like people are people coming like is the mailman for god's sake <laughs> the mailman can see me in my underwear <laughs> or oh, it's just like i don't want to, i don't want to have to talk to anyone yeah no like, seriously that's how i am it's like i literally yeah. can't talk no when my anxiety was really bad i really felt like i could not talk to another human being like as a normal person i was like what this is like i want like the charlie brown Yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> You're like writing things down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Life is life is wild. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, how do you develop your artistic skills? I just play my guitar and just kind of like whatever words come to me. I do a lot of voice recordings on my phone. So, like, if you go through my phone and go through my voice recordings, you'll just hear like. <laughs> like I don't know, <laughs> it was just me on guitar, like boop bop. That's very much a part of my process. Yeah, I don't ever like pick subject matter to write a song about. It's just kind of like what I'm feeling at that moment, or what needs to be said, or what needs to come out. And then, yeah, like with my more visual art, I used to like paint. I used to like paint boots and like 
canvases and yeah I used to painting was like my main medium for a while and then I just switched to like ink drawings because it was just simpler and I could I don't know I like the precision you can probably relate but like just getting super fucking precise I use the sharpie fine tip sharpies so you can just get like like the gothic like spirals and shit when I started when I started drawing that and like like the physical like connection like just there's something different about drawing than painting that I just was like okay yeah this is like more what I want to do right now I still love painting though but so drawing yeah more in touch because you're rub- it's like you're rubbing it yeah like no it's like it's very it's so direct I think which is why I like yeah, it because like, it's just like yeah it's like what is that called what what is the word I, there's like some word that I'm thinking of it's, yeah it's just like hand to straight brain, from just, your brain whatever the fuck is in your prefrontal cortex in, like, yeah your creative whatever straight through your hand and onto the page it's instant and I and I am a sucker for instant gratification oh, yeah I'll be real yeah like I I I think it's just like the whole like visual thing like I love watching something like unfold like I need to see the whole process and not just the outcome because mm-hmm. I'm like edgy like that. <laughs> yeah. I need to, that gives me I'm more ideas. I'm like that. <laughs> me, I need to make more like cup holder cleaning videos. I guess. No, like people Freak love that shit. Like, I do too. Like the detailing videos yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. No, they get like millions of likes though. Like they're so viral. Like shit. People, people need this like in their life. Right. They need that good clean they want to see that good man who laid the gun. they need like every nook and cranny yes. those crumbs are coming out there's <laughs> the, those little pebbles on the floorboard oh, God. are coming out <laughs> gotta use a little brush to get the, the back in dust. there with that fucking toothbrush yeah in there with the toothbrush the brush and the teeth oh man <laughs> That's cool, yeah. <laughs> vacuuming, God. Vacuuming like, is so relieving, cathartic. What a relieving thing. Just cleaning. I love I cleaning. Love cleaning yeah. Your house is very clean, yeah. I know some people like hate cleaning and it's like really triggering for them, but it's the exact it's opposite true. for me. Therapy. It my is soul. my therapy. My soul. Sometimes I feel like I'm enabling myself though when I clean. Because I'm like, bitch, your OCD is fucked. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so like when I clean it like see that? yeah no, it like, like, soothes my OCD like so much but also I'm like Juniper that does not need to be cleaned right this second you will live like it's fine leave it but my OCD is like no I'll fucking clean it you dirty rat <laughs> you dirty freak <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, love love a good clean. Uh, yeah. Love buying cleaning supplies. Ooh. The multi-purpose See, sprays uh, at Trader Joe's. Oh uh, yeah, we get we get the. Oh yeah, <laughs> on deck. Got the good smell and the. Uh, Cedar and sage. Uh, uh, <laughs> shout out Trader Joe's. Cedar and Joe's. sage, babes. Yep, just went today. Ooh. Magical experience God. as always. I love it. I love it because you're yeah. not overwhelmed by decisions. I'm not like, oh my god, I have to pick from like yeah. 50 different roles. It's ones. narrow. Yeah, it's narrow. Mm-hmm. Oh and god. everything's going to be good. Yeah, exactly. Like, I you can trust the, Mr. Doe. I love the Indian dinners. Oh, man. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh. <laughs> the, oh. the, are you vegetarian or vegan or anything? I uh, know, but I eat it all. Oh, okay, yeah. The vegan uh, tikka masala. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> me. Okay, I, 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 have to tell a funny story. Okay. Me and my ex partner, who I'm still very good friends with, Patrick. Oh. He was on an episode. Yeah. Archie yeah. Blue. Yeah. yeah. We used to get it. Well, mostly him. He was obsessed with the fucking vegan tikka masala, and I was too. But like, he lived off of it. And we ate, both of us did, and we ate it so much that I really got repulsed by it and, like, disgusted by it for, like, a while. 
and he just kept eating them though even when i would be like so repulsed i was like you have to stop eating these like we have to stop because we would go and we would like literally get like a fucking armful of the vegan tikka masala and dump it into our cart like fucking bandit and i was like they're gonna fucking ban us from trader joe's because like we're taking all of the vegan tikka masala <laughs> like i know people are coming here for that That's so nice. anyways yeah side story nice yeah. but yeah i do their frozen stuff indian dinners good guys i just i love indian food me too the paneer yeah, the paneer, panache, whatever it is. Paneer, panache. Is that? Panish. 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 Pish, pish. <laughs> okay, so of all time, what are some of your favorite bands, brands, or artists? Okay, yeah. Well, I'd say my two biggest influences in terms of songwriting are Elliot Smith and Liz Fair. Also, how they play guitar is really inventive and was super influential on me when I was learning because there's such an imperfect simplicity about the way they play. Joni Mitchell too kind of had like, she, I know she like made up her own style of playing, but yeah, just having artists that like, like sometimes when you play the guitar, it's like out of tune or like if, if you don't you, like the more imperfect it is, the, the better it is the type charm. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The charm. It's like, there's so much character to like, that type of playing like like sonic youth too is one of my other heavy hitters but yeah like the just experimental like guitar that they do and like yeah all, just all that was super inspiring to me because i was like oh it doesn't have to be like perfect like i actually don't have to know what i'm doing like it's okay to not like know what i'm doing and actually that can be used to your advantage so yeah, I just taught myself, like, the basics, and then I was like, what? I don't know. All the all of my chords are just, like, two-finger chords. They're super fucking simple, and, like, most of the time when I play, my guitar's out of tune because, like, I still don't, like, know how to tune my guitar. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's not totally true, but it's more so <laughs> I know how to tune it, but most of the time it's out of tune because I'm just, like, don't <laughs> care. Oh, yeah. So yeah, Elliot Smith was fair. And then in terms of like vocal style, Mazzy Star is huge for me. I love her voice. I love the way she sings. It's so like effortless and dreamy. And Jeff Buckley too. I'm like horny for Jeff Buckley. Rest in peace. No, I just think he's, like, such a beautiful person, and his voice is so emotional, and, like, God. the emotions. Angelic. Yeah, angelic is Hallelujah. really. Hallelujah. Who can, who can cover that song like and, like, make it, like, actually rival the original, though? Because a lot of people have done it. Yeah, not like Jeff. Yeah, angelic. That's truly. Yeah, it's just, like, some, some, some of my favorite artists, is like, when I think about them, it does kind of make me sad and it reminds me of that sadness and that like darkness that artists will use for their you know as a creative outlet but then also can be their like downfall eventually you know right like some of the greatest artists it's like not really with jeff bugley because i think that was an accident right he drowned. how he died yeah yeah i think like in memphis or something yeah um, which is super yeah. fucking sad yeah no one should drop down by that way. No. I was like, right after, he was like... like you know, the, like he was just getting started, like... Oh, yeah. I was like, the the yeah. guy whose portrait I have in there, he oh, played yeah. with Jeff Buckley. Really? Yeah. That's so Before cool. he was in Tool. The drawing? Yeah. That, you that drummer played for Jeff Buckley. Really? Yeah. yeah. Before he was in Tool. Wow. He was also the drummer for Carol King. It's like kind of crazy. How um, many... those are all like very different and like eclectic mix. I know it's crazy. Jeff Buckley and Carol King maybe not as much, but definitely Tool. Oh, yeah, like yeah. those. Are... That's funny. Yeah, he was like. Wow, a... I would love to hear some stories about that. Yeah, he was like, dude. So when I was in a band with Jeff, mm -hmm. Jeff was like, obviously, you know, we're all blown away by his guitar stuff. Oh, yeah. And then he starts telling me about his singing stuff, and I'm like, Jeff, like, he, like, we listen to it, and he's like, well, 
man, you're gonna be a star. <laughs> yeah, like he was like he was like I wasn't as interested in his singing as much. Yeah. I thought he was a hell of a guitar player. Right, like, because he was a session player yeah, before like, he was a solo Yeah, I was artist. like, dude, let's play some crazy shit. And, yeah. and he was like, nah, man, this is what I've been writing. And then he was like, oh man, that's so. He he, he's he like, loves. You got to go on your own. Like, he, 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 well, he was like, he was like, man, that's pretty and all and cool. Yeah. But you could be doing this shit and like. He was like, like his guitar playing was cool, yeah, but so you can ma- be, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. can like make a whole fucking album. Yeah, from, like, I was like, below he, yeah, he, but then he heard him sing and he was like, uh, I'm, you're going the right way. I'm like, did he know he could sing? Yeah, he had to have known. Yeah, nobody. Danny's like, oh my god, dude, you're gonna be a star, dude. You're gonna be a star. Seriously, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, and he was, and he burned really bright. Yeah. And yeah. He's still with us, though. Yeah, he is. No, his music is so touching and so just vulnerable, you know, and, like, raw and just... He's like, I'm depressed. Now everybody knows. Great. Yeah. I don't have to be alone. Right. That's, like, that is my favorite art. The people that are just Me like, too. I'm fucked up, yo. I'm so fucking like, depressed and, like, y'all, you, this is what I'm You doing. want me to be here? Well, okay, then I'm going to make art about it. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like spinning on a huge grind of this one band lately. They're called Ministry. Oh yeah, I've heard and them before. Dude, I have just been. They become one of my favorite bands. They have w- one of their albums with the with the, the hand, hand and the finger. Yeah, it's called with yeah. sympathy. That was the first album. That okay because weren't they like a metal band? Industrial before? metal. But, no, afterwards. Oh, after. That was their first record. And so then, which one do you like? The industrial metal. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, I need to I'll check say, that out. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a video afterwards. Okay, it's yeah. Like, it's like, because we were talking about the depressing stuff. But like, oh, but yeah. He talks about this really real subject matter uh-huh. that I have not found any song in the past 10 years probably to describe how mm-hmm. I feel as a person. More so really? than the song that I've been diving into. Really? Okay. Like, there's this one lyric. It's like... Um, it's the song is called Burning Inside. And okay. oftentimes I'm feeling very just like I wanna go do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like music that's just like everything's gonna be fine or whatever. I'm mm. like, dude, I'm like there's like a fire inside of me. Like I've got like I'm yeah. ra- I'm raging. And like yeah, yeah, so when right? I hear this music that's pretty like intense and chaotic, it gets like I'm calm now. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cause I'm like, Cause it's you how I feel inside. know you're not alone. Exactly. And like, he's like, he's like, yeah. basically the song is like, I'm going for the stream. It's high, high, high in the sky. Uh-huh. I can see it. And so can you, but you're also going to tell me how to live, which mm. I don't think you should tell me at all because I'm not interested in how you live at all. And so mm. he's like, Basically, it's like, uh, you never had the answers, and now you give me, or tell me the facts of life. Well, I couldn't mm. really be bothered with you. Get out of my face and watch me die. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, that is how I feel, man. Wait, why does that sound like a Nine Inch Nails song? I don't, well, dude, yes. Don't you fucking know no, who you well, are. He, he was the precursor to Nine Inch Nails. Oh. Al Jorgensen was the reason Nine Inch Nails is the because. Oh, okay. Trent really? Reznor was that makes sense. Trent Reznor was the roadie for Ministry back in the day, and so so, so Al would haze the shit out of <gasps> uh, Trent Reznor. Oh. He like like <laughs> bullying him. Yeah. Kind of? Well, yeah. Give him a hard, he was super a hard time. Super hard time. That's yeah. Fucking so gnarly. there's this hilarious. I'll tell this really hilarious yeah. story. So I'm reading his autobiography right now. Al Jorgensen, the lead singer of Ministry. Oh, okay. Man, it's like a it's horror good. movie, a thriller movie, a comedy, a tragedy. I mean, I'm I'm reading it late at night because like sometimes I can't find anything that's just like thrilling enough. For yeah. Me. Like I just want to see someone destroy really? their life. And, and this guy like is like, like a train wreck. Yeah, this guy is like a train wreck. And at one point he's like he's like all right, so it was me, Trent, and Bill Rifflin and. Mm-hmm this other dude and we were all in the studio mm. and I had laid out the ground rules. Whoever goes to sleep first is going to get their head shaved and their face shaved. So that we're going to shave your eyebrows and your, and your, and so Trent and they're like, all right, cool, whatever. And so 
then uh, Al's doing all this cocaine, and then he oh. uh, roofies Trent, and he roofies the drummer, and yeah. then and then they both like fall asleep, or whatever, That's and stuff so, starts buzzing off the drummer's head, and he wakes up and he's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Dude, you fell asleep." And then they get to Trent, and Trent's like starts coming to, and Al's shaving his head, <gasps> and. Trent's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, dude, you fell asleep. You weren't supposed to fall asleep. Like, that were the rules. No. And then, and then dude, they shaved, uh, uh, they shaved his head, like, half his head off, the hair, and then shaved half, like, a whole eyebrow off. <gasps> and, and Trent was like, what are you, like, freaking out, like, screaming, like, went to the mirror and was like, oh, my God, what did you do? Yeah. And, and then a month later, Trent Reznor's in fucking oh. faces on the magazine, and it's like Trent sets a new hair trend with his, and Al's like laughing, he's like, dude, I did that to him. Like, so, like, Trent got, once he's, he kind of blew, oh, popped off from after that. that well, he kind of popped off months after that. And so they thought he was trying to set a new trend because oh, his hair was all fucked his up. His hair was fucking crazy. Yeah, and he's writing this dark music. And he's so, an artist. Yeah, exactly. So it's, like I, it's what gave him an edge. Yeah. Though. So Al was like, "This is hilarious." I roofied him yes. and did that to him, and he got like all this. All like, this like hype. Yeah. Well, I, as he fucking should. I know. You should roofied him. I know. It's so messed yeah, up. I was like, like dude, it's like t- different time and place. Jesus. That's it's, karma. Yeah. D- different time and place for yeah, But this sure. book is full. I would love to read that That's book. That's why I was like, dude, I got to shit after this. I got to yeah, show you yeah, this yeah, yeah. interview with him. Because he's okay. like extremely charismatic. And he's like extremely uh, extroverted, and so like cool. when you see him interact and you mm. see the way he is, then you learn where Johnny Depp got his idea for Jack Sparrow. This really? guy is resembles Jack Sparrow. Really? Is that like? And they is knew that e- fact? And they knew each other. Yeah, Johnny Depp and Al Jordanson were in a band in the '90s. That's right. Johnny Depp did music because like River Phoenix be was also in the band too. And Yo, uh, River, River Phoenix, Phoenix died the night died that night that Al was with Johnny Depp. Oh fuck! Cause they were all there, weren't they? Yeah, they were all. It was at the Cobra, or it was at the uh, <laughs> whatever. It was at the, what what is what is Johnny Depp's uh, place? It would have been? been at the fucking Cobra. Yeah, it would have been Johnny weird. Depp's uh, Viper. Viper, Viper. That's what it was. Same Viper. fucking yeah, thing. Cobra, Cobra Viper. Viper, whatever. Anyways. Yeah, yeah I'm guy's... I'm stoked to check that out. What Jack Sparrow? Oh my God, I used to I used to fuck with Pirates of the Caribbean as a kid. Did, my mom was like, "Jordan, we're gonna go see Pirates of the Caribbean." And she and then <laughs> like we had this in my house. We had a play, yeah. playroom and like it was Hawaiian themed. And oh, part shit. of it was all Jack Sparrow. <gasps> my mom was like, had a shrine, "Oh my God, basically, Jack to, Sparrow to, stand. Yeah, Jack Sparrow like. <laughs> Like like posters. Like she's like, reading like Jack Sparrow well, fanfic. She, exactly. <laughs> like she made the room to be Hawaiian, but it was more oh, to be yeah. themed enough to where she <laughs> put all her Jack Sparrow and Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. Her Jack Sparrow memorabilia. Yeah, like we had a epic. we had a, a mannequin in the corner dressed like a gorilla in the and it was the playroom. Oh. So it was like Hawaii themed. Like my mom just like <laughs> Wow, she sounds like a who. She is a who. She sounds like a she is a who in a, a hall, great man. mind. She's like <laughs> seventy two and for my brother's bachelor party we uh-huh. all went skydiving and she went went She us. went she was like not even scared at all. She was like, I wanna be the first one. That's to fucking bad. I'm like, Mom You I'm, come from a strong lineage it seems. Yeah, you know, my mom's like, like powerful not, women. Powerful like, women, on, dude. Y'all. The women, man. The matriarchs of my the family. The matriarchy. <laughs> Did your dad go sky- skydiving too? Nah, he. Yeah, no, no. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but he was a big marathon runner back in the day, so he was pretty extreme physically. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, he used to do like Boston Marathon, Big Sure. Like, uh, he used to. He would. That's so much physical I, activity. My dad was a pharmacist, and he had his own pharmacy, and he would run. From my house on the mountain, uh-huh. off the mountain, to East Ridge, to his oh, pharmacy, and then what? he would work, For work, and then work, and then run home, or he would stay the night there. What? Yeah, yeah. That's how hard. That's how hardcore my dad got. <laughs> so extreme. Yeah, yeah. At one point, yeah, he would like he would run <laughs> so much, like. That's very like. 
Yeah, he was, he was at one point. Like, I'm, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, Dude, that's the same. I'm not doing anything till I get my little jinky and my little snacky. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not laying up. <laughs> yeah, it was anyway. different time. Like, yeah. God damn. No, like the will to live, like that fucking like when you just have that much energy Fire and you're just like job. yeah. Some people really do just have, like, energy, yeah. though, that they just have to... See, I feel like I'm a tired person, but, like, some people are, like, the opposite. They're, like, I have too much energy. That's how I am. Mm. You know, I have to, like, explore yeah. it. Yeah. Which is fine. It works with my lifestyle. But mm. I have to keep it in check. I can't chill yeah. too long or else I'll start getting, like, Ugh. The chill, the chill sweats. I'm like, I have to, like, when I go to sleep, I have <laughs> You gotta, like, do like, chill, some, like, I gotta, like, yeah, like, yeah, I gotta chill out. You gotta, like, get on the capital C, Capital C. <laughs> I'm just really trying to tucker myself yeah, out, guys. Right? Yeah. No, I go, um, I <laughs> go to the YMCA with my mom, like, once a week, and we swim laps. And the whole thing is just kind of, like, funny to me, like, <laughs> just, like, swimming in, like, a, <laughs> okay, just, like, swimming in a public pool, first of all, is kind of strange, right? And then, like, it's just, like, the people, it's just, like, a weird experience. Like, have you ever swam at the Y? Yeah. Like, this old guy was, like, being kind of weird to me, <laughs> like, and he was, like, this really old man at the pool and I was like oh wholesome and he was like <laughs> but as I was fucking walking out to go into like the women's locker room from the pool he was like so where do you think you're gonna swim when the pool closes and I was like Whoa. I wanted to be like don't fucking talk to me like, <laughs> what the fuck did you just say no I was just like I don't know, and walked in, <laughs> and just, like, walked away, but I was like, what the fuck? It's such a weird But yeah, question. it's weird, and then I go sit in the steam room and, like, ruminate for, like, 20 minutes, and it's just like, <laughs> and then I change, and then I go get my other little jinky, my coffee, that I treat myself with after my workout. I'm obsessed with coffee. I am, too. I, I'm always I drink a coffee. Lot of coffee. Probably coffee. too much. Yeah. It's not good for you, right? I mean... It's like the, like the caffeine. It depends, I guess. It's, yeah. I always think if you drink enough water, too, it's okay. And eat and... Because people do get dehydrated. Yeah. Like, that's so what, well, easily. That, that, that's what will happen to me, is if I drink too much coffee, I'll start getting tired because I'm getting dehydrated. Uh-huh. So, you're like, you have to, like, keep yeah. hydrated. I feel like I'm, like, kind of always dehydrated because... I know how much water you're, like, supposed to drink, and f- like, every day, and I feel like I just don't meet that. No, oh, yeah. But I guess that's my you own cross to bear. I did come with a fucking hydro. Yeah. So. How would you best describe the type of musician, fashion designer, and artist you are? These questions are very thoughtful, by the way. Oh. I would say... Hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, words instead of, like, sentences. I would describe it as, like, whimsical. Whimsical. Um, I would describe it as eclectic. Um, just my tastes in general are sort of all over the place. Like, for my music, it like, I used to be really focused on, like, how the song sounds in terms of like production and stuff but over time you kind of just realize that it's just like it's just an expression and an extension of who you are so there's no point in like trying to craft it into like your ideal version of what you think it should be so I would like to think that my art is raw and provocative and when I say provocative I mean like lyrics or art songs whatever that really make you like ask questions or like think like harder about things especially like about issues that I think are important or like my last song is about like 
fucking like how much I hate capitalism and <laughs> just like big corporate entities and how I think they're like goofy as hell and like should fuck off. So yeah, I talk about, I just like talk about stuff that pisses me off or makes me sad or, and yeah, I don't, you know, it's funny because I feel like as artists, you, you're always trying to figure out like, where does it come from? Like your style or your, like style is such like a, I don't know, your aesthetic, like I guess your style or your aesthetic, like we're always trying to figure out where that comes from or where it stems from but I, I I feel like that's a question maybe like we'll never know or maybe that's kind of just like you're not supposed to know you know why your why your style it, it like how you make your art like why it is the way it is right. I don't know like who's the puppet master uh-huh. like yeah like, I have these likes but why uh-huh. do I like them kind of thing yeah and like your life experiences too like inform so much of how you view the world and how you process it and like make sense of it you know I think within all of us is like a purpose you know sort of like nature versus nurture I think a lot of it is just like your soul's purpose or destiny and then the other part is I'm getting so fucking deep like that question was not that deep (laughs) can I just say this is my problem i'm like let's talk philosophy (laughs) but the question was like not philosophical (laughs) no worries yeah what would you you kind of said this earlier what would you say your art represents my art does represent a lot of like vulnerability and a lot of like pain that i've sort of can transform that energy into what is my art. I feel like a lot of my art is sort of like autobiographical, as, you know, a lot of artists, their art is sort of like a reflection of what their own experiences or their relationships or whatever. So yeah, I feel like in a way my art is very much like my my diary. And like, if you like examine it closely enough, <laughs> you can maybe hopefully when you like hear the music or see the art you sort of just by like osmosis feel sort of what I was feeling when I was making the art which I think is why we sort of make art because we want other people to connect to you know about what is so like deeply us pain and trauma and happiness and joy and sad all you know all of that included so right. yeah some of it's happy and some of it's like right some of it's like about love some of it's about like unrequited love some of it's about like trauma some of it's about um like misogyny and just like being a woman in the world um and and like the fear that comes with that yeah <laughs> all real stuff. All yeah. very real. Yeah, yeah. But that's what it's for. Yeah, but my album that I'm putting out in February, there are a lot of songs that are just like fun and like yeah. dancey and like a, a lot of them are about like serious issues, but it's like in a very danceable way. That's good. Yeah. Dance yourself clean. Dance yourself. Yeah, most of them are like dancey bops, so. You'll have that before it gets really fucking dark. Dark in this bit. Before, before it takes a turn. Before we enter the void. Oh. <laughs> Mysterious figures appear. Mm hmm. Yep. Where do you find inspiration? I find inspiration from like a lot of my like idols. Like, I, I also read like autobiographical books. Most of them are just, like, musicians and artists that I like. But, yeah, whether it's, like, books or... I I carry my, like, headphones with me in my purse. So I'm just always, like, listening to tunes. And, <laughs> yeah, like, in terms of art, like, visual art... I mean, there's so many artists that I like. I actually, just the other day... I don't know if you like Basquiat the painter 
he was he he was active in the '60s and like him and like Andy Warhol. Oh yeah. Were like besties and I think Andy like helped him with his career and stuff. Anyways, there was a fucking exhibit of Basquiat's like stuff that he had given to his close friends and like pe- people that he was close to in his life at TSU where my mom teaches. And the other day was the last day, but I went to that and it was really cool. And he had like, there were these like sweaters that he had like painted on, like he had painted clothes, um, which was super cool to see because I also paint clothes. And it was just like, a lot of it was just like really like primitive stuff, like collage based stuff and like photography. But yeah, it was all stuff that he had like given to his friends and like lovers and stuff. So that was kind of cool. Um, but he's one of my favorite artists, which is why I brought him up. <laughs> Basquiat. His full Basquiat. name is Jean-Michel Basquiat. He also died super prematurely. I think he was 20... I think he was a part of the 27 Club. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Morrison, too. Oh, I love yeah. Jim Morrison. Oh, yeah. I love Jim Morrison. His lyrics and his poetry I'm a big fan of. I want to fuck! <laughs> he was like, he was naughty. He was. <laughs> he was like a naughty boy. Very naughty. Um, he loved to show his penis to people. <laughs> yeah, he got in trouble yeah, for that for shit. For exposing himself in front of kids. Yeah, like, yeah, he did a lot of stuff for like, yeah, we're like talking about him like, mm, yeah. yeah, actually. <laughs> Questionable. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of Jim Morrison, though, because I'm reading uh, Just Kids right now by Patti Smith mm-hmm. about her relationship, her, well, about her life, but her relationship with uh, the photographer Robert Maplethorpe. And, yeah, anyways. Robert Maplethorpe. Yeah. Maplethorpe. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, wait, ha- have you seen Robert Maplethorpe's photography, though? It's like, it's like S&M, like, um, oh, wow. yeah, it's like. It's really, like, provocative stuff, especially for the time, like, in the 70s when he was uh, making the art. Anyways, I, Patti Smith, Patti Smith talks about Jim Morrison in that book. Yeah, oh, and then another autobiography I read was Kim Gordon's. Kim Gordon's, oh, yeah. Kim Gordon's autobiography was really good. Also very interesting what person. It, it's like Woman in Rock or something like that? What is it uh, Girl in a Band. Girl in a Band. Girl in yeah. a Band. Yeah, so, anyways... That's what I've been up to. <laughs> Those have been my recent inspirations. Yeah. What is your favorite time of day to create? I don't really have a favorite time. I, I do I do love being creative at night. I feel like there is something like the moon's the moon energy or something like I don't know. Like artists like staying up late and making art. Right. It's kinda like easy to romanticize that. But I kinda work just whenever. Whenever I just feel inspired, like if I have the day off, I usually start in the morning. I usually get up and just start working on stuff in the morning, whether it's like making music, uh, making demos, sending demos, drawing, submitting my art. Like there's a ton of making. I have fucking custom fucking gloves that I have to bedazzle and fucking ship out like next week. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's a ton of shit. We're talking about hobbies. That because that was something I recognized in myself as like, yeah, especially since you do like, you know, mental health is like a thing. So you need hobbies and like you need shit to keep yourself busy and you're a creative person and you like making art anyway. So, but. And you're going to be alive no matter what. Like you're, yeah. You're going to be here. Right. So you might as time. well like do yeah. something that is like fulfilling that you can do in your home create a space for yourself and your thoughts and your feelings that feels like good and safe to you. And I just have a bunch of those. Yeah. Little like, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got up oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. No, people are like, it's like, Oh yeah. I spend a lot of time by myself. And like, people must think, Oh, she's such a shut in. Like she's just staying at home all the time, which like, okay. Yeah, true. But like, <laughs> I do so much fucking shit. I always say, this is just so much hard work that like I'm not getting paid for. It's just, like why am I not clocked in? Because I swear at home I'm always I'm doing like a million things and I'm just like but it's all fun. Yeah. But it is work at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. But every you know, I mean you're an entrepreneur. If you anytime you like go against the grain. People are gonna be you like, gotta 
you're fight you're going against the grain right so it's not gonna be it's not always rainbows and butterflies right it's compromise <laughs> Right. That moves us along. Every time you move from one zone to another zone, mm-hmm. there's going to be resistance. Mm-hmm. Whether people are like, yeah. oh, you're doing weird stuff now. Do you really want to be doing that? And you're like, yeah. I'm like, you're being cringe. I'm like, get away from me. <laughs> you're being cringy. <laughs> That's like the evil voice in my head. It's like, girl, you're cringe. I'm like, do, do we need to fight this out? You're like, Shut Do we need to fight this out? <laughs> yeah. No, we have to have compassion for our shadow parts. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, all right, you're acting up. Kick my own ass. We're going to go running. Sometimes you do have to be your own. Your own, you're kind of a Well, everybody has man. to be. Not hitman. Henchman. Henchman. Or, or a guy who's like with the baseball bat who's like, he didn't yeah. play. Yeah. yeah. Get your ass. Yeah. Get your ass. <laughs> get your ass out of your comfort zone. Right. And into something uncomfortable that's going to make you grow. Right. So, how did Guillotine Princess and Guillotine Wardrobe come about? Like the name? Well, you're. Um, oh, yeah. I just came up, I was like, okay, I need a page for my art, and I need a page for my clothes, so, I don't know why I thought of guillotine. I think I was, I think I was, like, researching Marie Antoinette. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest, I think that's what it was. I was, yeah. like, <laughs> I was, like, in my Marie Antoinette, like, coquette era, like, Sofia Coppola, like, virgin suicide era, so, <laughs> I was, like, just as, like, very morbid image of like a woman with her head cut off i was like hmm interesting guillotine princess that has a that rolls off the tongue i like that guillotine wardrobe Ooh, yeah. shock factor shock, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that all boils down to shock factor yep mm, yeah it's like s- subtly seductive as well as like oh scary like, like scary like yeah I, that's that's the mystique I'm into. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, like I really like the gloves that you make. Oh, thank gloves, you. So they're like, ridiculous, aren't they? But yeah. Like, like, how do you <laughs> well, how do you start with one? Is it just like the base glove? You already get that. Yeah, I just like buy the gloves and then I just go crazy with the bedazzle gun. You have to heat it up. I burn I burn my fingers like a million times when I'm like a day when I'm working on my gloves. But yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> like so many. And I have like, I figured out like, like cheat codes to make it faster for me with like all the gems. Like I, instead of like doing the bedazzle gun for like each individual gem, because I don't even know how many gems are on one glove, but it's like hundreds, you know, yeah. like it's covered. It's gotta be. But so I figured out that I can just like heat up the iron and then like I place, I lay out all my gems on the glove, how I want them. And then I put, like, a real thin, like, linen cloth or silk cloth over that. And then I put the iron on that. So I can do a bunch of gems and get them on the glove all in time instead of, and like... And then you flip it over and then... They... The gems have glue oh, on the right. back. So they're the, just... So the iron mm-hmm. helps you And them. Yeah, but, yeah, you have to, like, melt them for them to, like, fix onto the fabric. Oh. So, yeah, that's just, like, a little cheat <laughs> that I do <laughs> to get, like, a bunch of them done. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. They're fun. Yeah, I was like, man. Sparky. I have, that's like, it's been a project that has like honestly been for my inner child. Yeah. Because just like the sparkles oh, and, like the and like all the little things that I order, like for the gloves, depending on like what the person wants. If they're like, oh, I want, I don't know, like this um, person that I'm making gloves for now, she, she wants them for space prom. Oh, so we're doing yeah. like a... Like a, like a space prom theme. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, those will be fun. Are you going to space prom? Um, I wasn't planning on it. I've been to space prom before. Are you going? Yeah, I'm going. Oh, nice. I'm trying to get my bandmates to go. Cause they've really? Never, they've never been. That's where Dee Stafriz's this whole project. Yeah. Right? Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, he's Crazy. a good organizer when it comes yeah. to events. and mm. He's just extremely like... Yeah, I don't even know what kind of like 
level of planning and organizing something like that would take, but I can imagine it I mean, would it be like a full time job. Every, yeah, every yeah. year it gets bigger and bigger. So he's like, he's like doing Woodstock. <laughs> like he also goals. has Freeze Fest. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no shit. He does a couple of things. Crazy. Um, whatever. The ambition. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, cool. So. Do team wardrobe? You miss like you have your your gloves that you make. What else do mm-hmm. you make? In there? I like repurpose a lot of stuff and like paint on stuff that I find. Like I go to the Goodwill bins a lot, so I'll just get random shit to either. I have a Depop page, so I'll either like resell like the stuff that I find, or I'll like paint on it and sell it on my website, or I'll just like find weird zany stuff that I think is cool and like keep some of it for myself or like just have it on display in my house <laughs> like art <laughs> but yeah the goodwill bins I'm like the y'all get your ass to the bins because that's <laughs> where that's like so much of my self-discovery was from the bins like when it comes to like my style and just like my relationship with clothes like I bought a lot of new clothes and like and then when I started going to the bins, it's like all this cool vintage shit and like just weird stuff that you cannot find anywhere else. You know, just like from some grandma's wardrobe, you know, from the fucking 80s or some shit with like this crazy wardrobe. It's like she just donated it on. Oh, it's in the bin that I'm looking in. And like I find all, you know, it's like treasure. My dopamine, the, the, the dopamine hits that I fucking get every time I find something cool when I'm at the bins, I'm like, Y'all, like, it's so fun. You're just, um, like, a cat purring so hard. Yeah, no, I'm, like, purr <laughs> for the smelly bins. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Wear gloves. I, oh. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, sometimes I wear gloves, sometimes I don't. It's not really, like, like, sharp objects, no. It's just, it's more so just, like, gro- like, wetness and, like... <laughs> I'm making it sound like so. <laughs> this is not gonna entice anybody. The wetness. <laughs> God only ma- can imagine where that's from. <laughs> the wetness at the. Oh my God, that's actually so tragic. Yeah, no. So the, moist, some... <laughs> the moisture you might feel. Sometimes the clothes are moist and smell foul. But yeah, that's kind that's of a expensive. rare occasion. Like it, mo- like most of the time when I go, it's like it's chill. Yeah. And there's no weirdness, and I just find my shit and leave. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> How would you say you want to be remembered by your art? Oh fucking hell! God, <laughs> fucking damn it. Um. <laughs> How do I want to be remembered? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean remembered? Like, am I gonna die? <laughs> How I would want to be remembered is Coochie Queen, <laughs> Slay Kitty Love. Coochie Queen, Slay Kitty Love. <laughs> I guess Coochie what- Queen, Slay the House Boots Down. I guess yeah, I your remember. art, how you want your art to be remembered. Yeah. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> how I want my art to be remembered. I don't know. I just want people to, like, connect with it and feel it. Because hoarding those feelings and emotions does nothing good for me. So at the very least, I just hope that, like, other people can, like, find peace within the things that bring me peace. So, and you have to like, you have to share, yeah. you know? So I want my art to be remembered as like being like a safe space and like a space for people to go and explore maybe parts of themselves that like they haven't thought about or maybe don't want to think about. But I also want it to be like at, at, at the same time that I want my art to be like a source of like comfort and like relatability I also want it to be like you know risk taking and like thought provoking and I do want people to think think about challenging subjects and like I I think good art does challenge its viewer listener 
whatever. And I'm not saying that my art does that, but that that's just like my goal. Yeah. So. That's awesome. When did you uh, move from UTC back here? I graduated 2019. Yeah. So it was 2019, May, something like that. Oh, okay. And so, it's 20, almost 2023 20, now. Night, so that's almost four years. Fucking, I'm like getting up there. <laughs> so, what have you learned living here? Like in Nashville, I've learned that I probably don't want to live here one day. <laughs> don't want to live here one day. <laughs> yeah, just because I'm like from here. Oh yeah. You know, eventually. I gotcha. But. I've learned that Nashville really is a great place to explore. You know, there's like, like, oh, country music. There's more than that here. And like, I love being from the South. Some things about being from the South. But I am a Southern gal, like at heart. So you can take the girl out of the creek, but you can't take the creek out of the girl. It's one of my lyrics. Oh. Lyric dropping. Oh, I like that one. Deep. Can't take the creep out of the girl. That's true. That's, yeah. That feral behavior. It's true. You can't take the mountain out of the man. Ah. I'm from a mountain. There you go. What is some advice you'd give to someone who's going to move here and pursue art? Just be authentic and you have nothing to worry about. Just be authentic and share all of your art at all times and stages. And don't be afraid of that. And that's advice that I'm giving to myself as well. Yeah, I think we all need to hear that. What is your biggest personal growth last year this year? Personal growth? Oh, man. Probably just like being more um, spiritual and in tune to just the energy, collective energy force of the world. <laughs> that sounded so like typical cheesy <laughs> spiritual <laughs> but that just like spiritual awakenings oh yeah in college i had like a really bad um existential crisis all of which has provided me with a lot of growth because g- growth i mean for me it, it has come from being from reflecting on my life and like being introspective but yeah just like spending time with myself and like just when you learn to love yourself and you just become completely like dedicated and and devoted to creating your own world full of your own interests and like just fully submerging with the world that you create yourself create for yourself when I started doing that that's when like the real growth started to happen because I, I mean I went to college you know when you're in school it's like fucking programming brainwashing you know when you're a kid and then even in, even in college it's like a lot of the same stuff but I mean I learned a lot you know I got like a st- you know standard like liberal arts education like I, mem- I memorized a lot of dates and like paintings and shit I learned a lot about like fucking you know feminism and critical theory and f- you know but when I after I graduated it was like the years the years after I went to college was when I was like, Oh 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 start realizing some like some shit, you know about yourself and the world and our place in it. That's when I went vegetarian. Yeah, a lot of change. Wow. Yeah. So you now what are some of your favorite YouTube videos or what do you like to watch on YouTube? I wa <laughs> well, as of lately I've I, I watch like old like music videos and I was watching a bunch of like Cocteau Twins music videos the other night. I go on like weird. But I've been watching Emergency Intercom. Emergency Intercom. On and I feel like you would like Emergency Intercom. It's so fucking funny. It's honestly it informs like so much of my humor and what I think is funny because I just wish I could be friends with those people in in, in person because like I just I'm constantly laughing. It's so fucking funny. I'll have to check it out. Emergency so Intercom. Yeah, but I, I watch the um, like video version of their podcast. And uh, sometimes they dress up and they're just funny. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what else. I, I watch like weird psychology docs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'll have to like go on there when I get home and see like what I've been up to. 
yeah. besides emer- <laughs> besides emergency intercom. What would you say is the way you like look at most media? Is it um, YouTube or like? Yeah, I listen to a lot of like physical CDs. Um, I like collecting CDs. That's one way I consume media, and then like, yeah, YouTube, Pinterest. I have like art books and stuff that I'll look through. Unfortunately with art, it's kind of like, you just kind of have to like Google images and stuff, you know, or like find them. I also, I love going to this place called Turnip Green. Oh yeah. And the fucking vintage photos and magazines that they have are so fucking cool. I, I, I get a bunch of vintage magazines and then I use, I use, I tear out pages of the paper and use them as like wrapping paper for like my clothes and stuff um just because the images are really cool yeah wow. that, i don't know what else um i go i try and go to art shows and like museums and stuff there's like a cool e- exhibit at the first i'll try and go or movies yeah cool well is there anything else that you'd like to add that i might not have asked you about uh, no i think i've talked your ear off i think i've probably talked to everybody's ear off what is okay? Here's the last question. <laughs> okay. What is something absurd you love or do? Something absurd. Yeah. That I love. That I love or do. What is something absurd? I just immediately thought of my relationship with my dog. <laughs> Cause like, <laughs> just like, I feel like I'm like the like a crazy dog mom sometimes when I when I'm with him. Cause I'm just like. Like, I don't know. <laughs> What's up, Archie? We have, like, little games that we play. And I feel kind of crazy, but he loves it. And yeah. I'm going to do what I have to do. Yeah. You know, I'll be the crazy dog lady. I'm like, come on, we got to take a bath. What kind of dog is it? He's a miniature dachshund. Oh, really? So he's very, talk- like, very loud and diva-ish. Mm-hmm. Very, very stubborn. <laughs> but yeah he makes my life fun awesome well juniper thanks for <laughs> thank you podcast. bless you too roommate yeah. <laughs> no thanks for having me that was so fun good great questions like yeah yeah awesome real recognize real no all right real recognize real